Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Uh, as you can see, we are not in the usual GMBN Tech set, although I've managed to find something that looks kind of similar at the back of the Trailhead Bicycle Company. Um, more on that later. Coming up on the news this week, uh, we check out the new IBIS Ripmo Mark II or Volume 2. We also check out Crank Brothers Synthesis Wheels, the alloy version, and some more great stuff, including stuff from Mavic. <laughs> And first thing in news is a new set of the D-Max Pro wheels from Mavic. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you might have spotted the wheels I've been running on my uh, Nukeproof Reactor Pro. Uh, they're actually the same wheels, just the slightly older model. So here's a shot of them on the screen. Uh, they've got the Day of the Dead graphics because the ones I'm running are the Sam Hill Limited Edition versions. Now check out these ones on screen. Now this is the brand new model. Um, so they're 29 inch wheel, they're Boost. They've got a 28 mil wide hookless rim design on them. Uh, as with all top end Mavic wheels, the rim bed is fully sealed. Uh, ready to accept tubeless from the off. They obviously come with tubeless valves. Now they're a 24 spoke design, so less spokes than a lot of other manufacturers use. And the spokes are Mavic's own patented material. They're made of Zycrol, uh, extremely light and stiff, and they've got a slightly bladed style to them. Now the wheels are stiff yet compliant. That's something that all of the racers have been in need for. They wanted something that's stiff enough when they're really pushing into turns. And they don't want the wheel to deflect, but they don't want that front end to be so stiff that it actually transmits shock through because you've got to think the wheel has to have an element of flex to combine with traction and comfort. So that is key from all the riders. Uh, the limited editions are still available to Sam Hill Day of the Dead graphics, uh, but check out the new polished hubs on them. Oh man, these things look seriously nice. Uh, I need to set these in my life. Now uh, they come with the XD driver on the back there to run the SRAM setup, but you can also get a micro spline system, which I've actually got on mine. Uh, and they're delivered with four spare spokes, the valves, adjustment key, and torque cap covers as well. The only downside is they are extremely limited, so you better get some quick if you want them. Uh, and if your wallet allows, they retail actually for about a thousand euros a pair. Uh, next up in news is the latest bike from Ibis Bikes uh, in Northern California, in fact. Uh, it's the Ripmo version 2. This is it on screen. Uh, it's available in two colors. There's Star Destroyer Gray and Bug Zapper Blue, uh, both of which are equally crazy names. Well, I've got to say I'm a little bit disappointed um, after chatting to the guys at Ibis last year before Sea Otter that they didn't do the Spouse Camo color, which of course was, uh, was talked about in-house because the staff at Ibis Bikes actually named their bikes. And they were going to make one all in black called Spouse Camo uh, because you can keep buying new bikes. So you can always get it in black and it's always going to blend in. Perfect name for a bike, I think. But never mind. Missed opportunity this time, perhaps. Uh, it's 29 inch wheels, 160 mil travel front and rear, uh, enough clearance for a huge 2.6 inch tires. Carbon link front and rear, it's got a DW link. It runs a bushing on the bottom mount, which is lifetime warranty, and it's got bearing on the upper one. Um, size is small through to extra large. It's got 64.9 degree head angle there, a 76 degree seat angle, so a little bit better for climbing, a little bit longer, a little bit slacker. Even the size small all the way through to XL can accommodate up to 170 mil dropper, so they're keeping the seat tubes nice and short. So there is the opportunity there, potentially, to size up if you do want to get a slightly longer reach on a bike. Uh, yes, a seven year warranty on the frame there and like I say, lifetime warranty on the bushings. Uh, seriously, nice bit of kit there. I don't get why I don't see more Ibis bikes around. Absolutely gorgeous looking bikes. Do you like Ibis? If not, let us know. Let us know in those comments underneath. Now, a while ago on GMBN Tech, we were talking about the Crank Brothers Synthesis wheels. So they were carbon fiber wheels and they were independently different front and rear. The front one was designed to be a bit more compliant. The rear one was designed to be stiffer for better power transfer and of course, resisting flex when you're really pushing it into the turns. They've now released the same technology at a cheaper price point. They're available in alloy. So this is a set of the wheels actually on Sandy's bike, which is hanging up in the work stand here. Now they're made from 6013T6 alloy. They're 29 inch and 27 and a half inch models available. They're available in boost, uh, 28 hole front and tw uh, 32 hole rear. So proves the point, it's a bit more compliant on the front, a bit stiffer on the rear. But the rims themselves are actually different as well. So the front one is 31.5 millimeters wide internally and the rear is 29.5. So the front one is designed in combination with the uh, lesser amount of spokes on there 
to give an amount of flex, but to make sure the front tire has a better volume to it, whereas the rear one is a bit more taut on the back end there. Uh, and again, that's reflected in the spokes. So you've got D-Lite spokes on the front and race on the back, both from Sapim. Serious bit of kit, and they've got a two-year warranty on the rims as well. Really pleased to see those finally come down to a cheaper price point, because although the carbon ones are amazing, they're not for everyone. Uh, next up in news actually is something quite unfortunate. Um, I was really looking forward to going out to the Taipei show. Um, the Taipei show is absolutely huge and where you get to see all sorts of crazy engineering as well as some of the latest MTB tech. Unfortunately, because of the spread of coronavirus, it's been postponed. Uh, we will still be going along with our friends from GCN. Uh, it's gonna be postponed, I believe, until about May. So uh, I'm gonna have to sit on that one, I'm afraid. A bit gutted, but before then, we will be going to the Sea Otter Classic out at Monterey in California. So there's gonna be plenty more new tech from there. And finally, this week in news, um, well, I've got to tell you about the coolest thing that's going on this summer. It's the uh, Global Bike Festival. That's right, that is us. That is GMBN, that's GCN, that's EMBN, GMBN Tech all together. And uh, we're basically taking over Solbach in Austria. Uh, we're taking over the weekend of 18th to 21st of June. Uh, on screen are some pretty cool images from the place to give you a little idea of what it looks like. It's gonna be a packed week of events going from morning yoga to ride outs to competitions pub quizzes, party nights, you name it, it's all gonna be happening. I'm gonna be doing some tech clinics with Calvin from Park Tool. Uh, we're gonna have a number of demo bikes, literally everything is going on. Really excited to be there. And there's also a DJ lineup that's just about to be announced. I'll give you a little hot tip, you might see DJ Yoda there, you might see Crafty Cuts, you might see Norman J MBE there, who actually incidentally collects rally choppers, I think he's got about 18 of them. Uh, you might also see myself getting back on the wheels of steel. So uh, something I'm looking forward to, and hopefully we're gonna get to ride together. So. Check it out, there's an Instagram page especially for it, it's on screen. Um, I'm gonna be there, Neil's gonna be there, Blake's gonna be there, I think Chris and uh, Jonesy from EMBN, we're all gonna be there basically. Uh, come along and ride with us, should be sick. Okay, so uh, let's go back in history and do some rewind stuff. Okay, now it's time for Rewind. You know the score, this is where we talk about where Mountain Bucket came from. We're going back to the roots, looking at old tech. Uh, yes, that is a client attitude next to me, but no, that is not what we're talking about. What we're gonna talk about right now is... Ah, oh, yeah, well. This is what we're talking about. So this is a Pace Research. Um, I forget the model, this might be an RC200, but more importantly, this one belonged uh, to Richard Thackeray. He used to race from in the 90s. Up front, you'll see the classic RC35 on the front there. Um, it's got Magura HS33 direct mount uh, race line brakes on there. And actually, one of the coolest things, which you won't realize how cool it actually is, was their inverted version of what is now known as the A headset system. Uh, so the stem and the quill of the stem is effectively the steerer tube, and the steerer tube is actually clamped by the fork crown and is actually compressed from underneath. So it's a flip side up version of what we have today. But they did this in the era when you had regular uh, quill stems that went inside the steerer tube. You had a threaded steerer tube and a headset would basically do it with two lock nuts. Way nicer system, um, heavily CNC machined frame, famous for their box tubing. Could you call it tubing? I'll call it tubing. I'll get corrected, I'm sure, but it was kind of box tubing. Uh, Pace is still doing their thing today. Uh, up on the front of the bike, actually, it's got something very cool. Set of Renthal bars, I think these are the sub 130s. Uh, super lightweight handlebar. Of course, Renthal have been doing the mountain bike thing long before the Renthal that we know in this day and age. Um, Sandy, how did you get this bike? How did this one turn up? Well, this is actually a customer of mine and he bought the bike in um, just for a service. He's actually been riding it, um, which is... Which is amazing, full stop. Yeah, it's I think still it's going. cool that this bike's still going. Yeah. Um, what's super cool is it didn't come with these bars on. I had these bars. Huh. Um, and I don't often give stuff away as uh, anyone that knows me will, uh, will agree with, but I gave this guy these bars. Um, they it's are... It's fitting to on there. Uh... Yeah, it just seemed, you know, they're the, the collaboration between between Pace and Renthal, so it just finished it off nicely. Has been ridden, not original chain set, probably not original rear derailleur, no. but the external butting of this frame is just insane. It's, yeah, in fact, it's actually a good shout. I didn't actually say the fact that it's butting. Uh, you see the profile of the tubes, or you, the square tubes is shaved away. It works just like butting does, so on a frame you get it's maybe single butted, double butted, and triple butted to save weight and increase, uh, I guess, the ride attributes. You want it stiff in some places and strong, and you can, yeah, for you can cut the weight off in other areas where you don't need it. Um, I think as well, weird fact, I think that's a Mavic upper part of a headset as well. Yep, Mavic. Yeah, nice. 
Um, yeah, but super cool to see this. These are really, really rare these days. Remember the late Steve Wallen showed me his RC100, like you remember the original, the dark gray ones? Yeah. He had the rigid fork on his and the condition was just, it was amazing. I'd have bought the thing if I had the money to be honest. Uh, I'd still have one of these actually for the collection. I think they're lovely looking bikes. But, uh, kind of sick that Pace is still doing bikes today. Yeah. By all accounts. Yeah, in fact, this, this is their latest one on screen right now. So this particular bike has a few extras I just want to mention as well. So you might have seen in the past the RC36 or 35 forks I've got on the set at work. Uh, these ones are earlier, way earlier, because they've got the single piece tubular steel um, brake arch on the back of them. Whereas the ones I've got, have got the CNC machined aluminium plate. But incorporated into this, and as Sandy said, the reason that I know that this is Richard Thackeray's X race bike is because it's got the direct mounts for Magura's. Previously, you used to have adapters basically for them and Pace incorporated them into the bike. Uh, Magura's, in case you're not familiar with, they're hydraulic um, cantilever brakes, I guess you say, or just hydro hydraulic rim brakes even, if I can speak English. A um, couple other cool things on the bike, it's got the uh, seven speed Shimano thumb shifters. So thumb shifters back in the day were really, really quite cool. You could switch between SIS, which was your index gears and friction. So if you basically damaged your rear derailleur, you put it on friction mode, you could still change gear because you could constantly adjust or fine tune on the go. That's why they were so popular. And also in the middle of winter, if you're wearing big gloves, you could use your whole hand to change gear if you needed to. And a cool extra fact is that these are seven speed ones that had a hidden eight speed click on them. So you can actually run these even though a seven speed with an eight speed setup on the rear. Um, and rumor has it as well that this may well have been one of Richard Thackeray's uh, national championships winning bikes as well. But um, can't be too sure. Looks like one there. Okay, well that's enough of that pace. Um, ah, there we go, back to the client again. Um, Clearly that is one of the best paint jobs of all time. If you can think of a better paint job than that, I'd love to know what you think in the comments underneath. If you want to know more about this bike, you're going to have to hang on for a very special feature coming on GMB and Tech soon. Okay, now it's time for top mods. Um, I'm actually going to throw you to myself in the workshop. Okay, now it's time for top mods. Now this is usually where we show photographs basically of all your amazing bikes and the things you've done to them to make them a little bit different to your mates bikes or perhaps the ones you just buy from the shops. Uh, this time I want to show you a little bit about what I've been doing to my bike. Uh, so I've got a Nuke Proof Reactor 290 Pro. So that's 29 inch wheels. It's running 130 mil travel out back. I've actually upgraded the front fork on it to 150. It was 140 as stock just by changing the air shaft internally on there. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. If you want to know how to do that, um, let us know in the comments and we'll make that dedicated video on that. You might have noticed at the weekend I've visited Ride Fox UK to discuss coil shocks basically because a lot of you have been asking about them uh, to see if we want to fit coil shocks to bikes, uh, why you would want to do one, what the differences are, can you fit them on certain types of suspension design. So I went ahead and I've done it to my bike but also since then I'm going to show you a picture before and here's a picture with the coil shock and the air fork. I've since put the Marzocchi fork on the front which has got a coil spring in it and this is that one right now. Um, yeah, all right, so there's a lot of colors going on. There's a bit of orange. There's too much orange, perhaps, to red ratio. But it looks pretty badass, doesn't it? I've been doing some back-to-back -back testing. I've been riding at Bike Park Wales, a uh, bunch of different trails locally, just to sort of get my head around the main differences in the feel. Fully aware that you can tune anything to feel differently, and you can obviously, with coil, you can run progressive springs. You could run a spring dex to change that spring rate on there. There's different things you could do. I've tried to just run them stock and keep the setups as similar as possible. I've uh, got a video coming up on that soon, so keep an eye out for that one on tech, but uh, it's been pretty interesting stuff, that's for sure. Um, seeing as we're here at a trailhead, I thought I'd have a little look at Sandy's bike as well, because he's got a pretty interesting piece of kit. Um, so Sandy, last time I saw you, you, had, you were running, I think, a Mojo Geometron. Yep. All changed to the high pivot Forbidden Druid. That's right. Yeah. It's all changed in, in one respect, but still a 130mm bike, something Dolly I really like. Um, I, think, I think we're very similar on that respect. Yeah. Like to feel the terrain? Too right. Great. I yeah. don't want everything sort of dumbed down and, and, and sanitized almost through the bike. I want to feel what's going on. Uh, so it's 150 out front with a Lyric Ultimate, 130 on the back uh, with the, you know, the high pivot witchcraft. Yeah, so uh, high pivots, of course, so this one is slightly different, but high pivot bike, the whole point is basically to allow the rear wheel to move slightly backwards. The issue you have with a bike with a pivot point that allows the wheel to move backwards is you get chain growth. 
Uh, to combat that, you end up running the chain over that pivot. Effectively means it pedals like a low pivot bike with the advantages of it being a high pivot bike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this one has a very different linkage system on there. And isn't it right in saying that they, they didn't design it to be a high pivot, it just ended up being that way to have the linkage. That's exactly right, they wanted. they wanted the linkage the way they wanted it. And then the, the high pivot became a byproduct of that. I built this bike uh, for the, the Trans Provence. So you ground up, you spec this. How I wanted it, yeah. It did have different wheels on then. Um, I've just got these new, uh, the synthesis alloy wheels on. Yeah. The main thing for me is it's, it's 130 on paper, but it rides more like a 150 or a 160. Like it really does. Um, if you're ever in, uh, ever around, just come and have a go on it. Sick looking bike. I love the fact that you built this up from scratch as well. Uh, something I've always said that everyone at some point should build a bike. I right, get hold of a frame and just yeah. build the bike yourself. Put your, your choice of wheels, tires, fork. Um, it really does make the bike feel that much more your own. Yeah, for sure. I think when you, you're riding out on the trail, you've got a lot of confidence in your setup because you know you've made a decision on every part. Uh, yeah, it ends up costing a couple of pounds more, but you end up with a custom build specific for you. Well, let's face it, once you get to the, the sort of le mechanical level to build a bike from the ground up, you're kind of there anyway. Yeah. You, you're, you're invested in the sport emotionally and uh, yeah. uh, probably with a back pocket as well, so. Yeah, it kind of comes uh, hand in hand, for yeah, sure. Nice. Well, I love it, sick looking bike. Well, and seeing as we're here at the Trailhead Bicycle Company, um, they've got a pretty good bike cave, so let's check it out. Uh, seeing as we're in your workshop, and the first thing I want to mention is how cool your wall mounts are. Thank you. For the work stand. Um, I've actually been thinking of wall mounting my own work stand because I've got a very limited floor space, basically, yeah. but I haven't figured out a way of doing it, but that is really quite cool. Yeah, so what we've done is, it's the, it's the standard park tool, PRS 4Ws, um, you can buy them from any good bike shop or anywhere, but they, they are bolted onto this big old bit of wood. Um, we have to tighten them up every now and then. Sure, there's a lot of leverage going on. Sure, yeah. but it comes out maybe 200 mil, and it just means there's plenty of room here. You know, as a mechanic, you can get this side of the bike and you can, you can easily work on both sides. It's a really workable place without yeah. losing any of that floor space, yeah. Yeah. That's smart. Um, so what else you got lying around this place? I know it's, uh, I've seen all your prints. I've got a few of those trail yeah, maps hanging around. Yeah, we've got trail maps, we've got yeah. Whistler. In case you're wondering about the artwork on the wall, they're from trailmaps.co.uk. Uh, check them out, we've got a few at work. Uh, in fact, we've got a signed one from Annie Last uh, from the basically World Cup race when she was at Lenzerhide. And they're really cool and you can probably find some of your favorite trails from around the world. Uh, I, I just think they're pretty cool. Yeah, for I'd sure. I'd like to see them on the wall. This is a, an Eastridge one here. So that's, is, that's local, isn't it? It's just up the road. For yeah, US. exactly. It's 11 miles away. We had it done in blue and silver, and that's number five out of five. I think we've got two left of those. It's a special edition oh, they did nice. especially for us. Yeah. I think the Don would like one of those, wouldn't he? I think he might already have one. A bit, a bit of home turf for Neil, I think. Yeah, cool. So what else you got? And there's well, loads of stuff going on in here. We've got, you know, we've got bike tools and stuff, but we've got some pretty special door handles there, Doddy. They are... Uh, I see uh, what you've done there. They are Hope oh, Cranks. Now... I have to tell you a bit of backstory about these. They are not, uh, we haven't just taken some brand new cranks and bolted them on our doors. Um, there's some samples that Hope, uh, Hope sent us down actually, so that was really nice. Was that uh, before they went into production? Yeah, I think they were just some, they were testing out some graphics and stuff, so you could actually bolt them on a bike and use them, but we're not wasteful, you know, we haven't just taken brand new cranks and yeah. uh, bolted them on the doors. Massive old vice that big old Irwin. Yeah, it's got a that's number on the side of it. I think it's the Irwin number. Uh, it says um, record on there. Okay. On that side. We've got another one in there. And uh, I've got to show you the electric stand. Ooh, electric work stand. Come and check this out. <sighs> Good for my back, that is. Yeah, so. Here Not seen is. one of these in the wild. Here it is. That's a serious bit of kit, isn't it? A mechanic's back's best friend. This means you can lift the e-bikes, but to be honest, we use every bike in it. And you can go really high with it. <laughs> we can get underneath. I guess that's super useful with motor casing and BB repairs and stuff like that. Yeah, or even just, you know, stood here, throwing a wheel in the bike. You can, you can really get different areas of bike you can't in a conventional stand. Yeah, it's great. Expensive bit of kit. Yeah, do you know what? It is, but uh, an investment you know, when it comes to sort of looking after your staff, really. Of course, yeah. I guess it covers uh, 
Personal protection equipment, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Technically. Yeah. yeah. Useful for e-bikes. You doing more of these? Yeah, we're doing maybe, you know, one a week, whereas we were doing one a month four yeah. years ago. Well, I guess that's completely essential for e-bikes. Yeah. Straight out. Straight out of the box. Now, sometimes we put the box underneath yeah. and literally oh, lift literally them out of the cardboard using box. This? Yeah. No way. <laughs> Otherwise, you're having to lift it twice, aren't twice, you? So, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's cool. Fancy that at home? I'd love one at home. What about GMBN? I think we're getting one actually in the, in the workshop because the fact that the same, same thing, so many e bikes being worked on now. Yeah. And got to look after Pete the mechanic's back. Too right. Cool, let's have, a, let's have a look at the rest of the shop. Show me that Santa Cruz rain then. So, what's this about? This one here? Yeah. So, this is one of two of Rat Boys. World Champs frames. Nice. Uh, really cool paint job. Yeah. See, it's just very, very rat boy. Yeah, for sure. He is a big friend of uh, James, who owns Revolution Bike Park just down yeah. the road. And they built the 50 to one line together. And rat boy gave this frame to him as a thank you. Wow. Um, and then James has since bought a new Santa Cruz from us. This is on loan from Revolution Bike Park sits on our wall, and then uh, we've got the jersey yeah, over there, the jersey, the jersey. Yeah. Nice. Is that a Minar, Minar jersey? Minar signed. He Minar came Minar. in the trailhead the other day, part of Is his that when he's tour. doing his tour? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I saw him. Really in interesting town. guy, and we, yeah. we, we chatted business and, and bike shop as he has his own. Yeah. Uh, we've got the big man PTs there, and then uh, as you spotted on the way in, we've got another Mr. Queen's jersey. jersey. Yeah. Beaumont down there as well, I think I saw. That's right, and then... Of course, he's from this neck of the woods, isn't he? we got Chaos's jersey there. Didn't see that one. And we have got Tane somewhere. <laughs> I have had someone like saying, how much is this one? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what are those, um, do you wear these? Sacks, yeah, I do, They're actually. Really good. I haven't got them on, yeah. I'm, I'm a stance person. Yeah, no, stance is I'm good. Keen to... Uh, these have got the painted Ballpark pouch, keep everything in. Ballpark pouch? Keeps everything in place. Free... Got a present for you, actually. That's our, our JRA coffee. Oh, just riding, just riding along, along. Which is what a customer says when the bike snaps in three bits. Yeah. Uh, just That's riding a, along. That is amazing. There you go, Thank dude. you. So yeah, handlebars, grips. <laughs> yeah? What is this all about? We have a trail tool. That's the TT Mark II. So it's the second one we've done. We've been making trail tools now for for as long as we've been open, seven years. Great for benching, great for tamping. Solid. It's made locally by one of our uh, friends and customers. Be a, someone nicks your bike as well, be a... It doubles up. Yeah, nice. Bit of a jersey selection down here as well. Yeah, come and check these oh, out. Oh, I love this. How cool is that? Yeah. Who made that for you? Uh, Lego Sai. <laughs> one of my best mates from school. It's yeah. called Lego Sai. And uh, when I go to some bike shows and stuff uh, in Europe, no brands mentioned, but uh, the CEO of a big bike brand came, ah, oh, you're the trailhead, you have the Lego house. So that's amazing. Super cool that we're recognized from having Lego. I need, I need someone to make us a GMBN Tech Lego set. That would be really cool. I think Lego side could do it. Lego side should be our friend. If you go outside, we've got an alarm in exactly the same place yeah. and he's made it so, so it you cracks. Can take the top off. No way! So there's the that's character. Here. Yeah. <laughs> no way! Look at this. That's where we are now. <laughs> so that's Gwyn's jersey is down there. That's the cabinet that the Lego thing's in. Yeah, we used to have frames on the wall exactly there. That is so good. And you've got the workshop at the back. Yeah. And you've even got bikes in the workshop. Yeah. Is the door open? It yeah. Does. <laughs> so you got Joe Smith. Gwyn, is that a Timo at the back there? Dude, there's so many behind there. You actually, Beaumont. I've got like... Scotty. Scotty Lachlan, but I've got like um, some Nick Amalara's chainless Steve, jerseys there. Steve Pete. No Nick way. Amalala, yeah. There's so many under there. Yeah. Just Our, cast at the back. Just Gwyn, off of Gwyn's <laughs> back that is. Um, when he used to tape his number That's on. That's when he was number one. Sweet. Nice. Love, loving your space. It's good. Thank you. What do you think of us taking GMBN Tech on the road? You into us? Do you like us doing uh, stuff like this in random bike shops around the country? Have you got a local bike shop that's particularly good that needs a bit of a shout out? Let us know in those comments and keep on following what we're doing. Cheers, guys.